So what have we learned so far? We've found out that we have about 30% of the density we need, maybe more, but certainly 30%, which isn't enough to give us a flat universe. Our attempt to use geometry really failed because we can never tell what's geometry and what's evolution. And this whole idea of trying to measure the scale factor and how it changes versus time is looking promising. But the only way we can make it work is if we can measure distances. And that's proving to be really hard. Now, this has been a great controversy for decades in astronomy. It has. I mean, when we go back to well before, uh, you know, we were students. Well, when we were students, it was still a controversy, and that would have been in the early 1990s. And, uh, but even if you go back to the 50s and 60s, here at Mount Stromwell, we had Georges de Vaucouleur come up and use the now destroyed 30-inch telescope, the Reynolds telescope, to go out and look at galaxies and try to measure their distances. He consistently got a value for the Hubble constant, which is 100 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So if a galaxy is a megaparsec away, on average, it'll be moving 100 kilometers per second away from us, or that would be the redshift. Alan Sandage, who trained some of the astronomers at Mount Stromlo and a big person at Carnegie in the United States, well, he consistently got numbers around 50 using a similar set of techniques. And they really, as near as I could tell, didn't like each other very well. And so I, you know, when I went to school and I decided to measure the Hubble constant, it was because it was 50 or 100. And of course, when I went out and did my best, as we're going to find out the, the new techniques uh, in the next uh, set of lectures, uh, when you get a number in between, it turns out you were sort of despised by both sides. And so it was really bad behavior when it really comes down to it, because people were entrenched with the value, not the science behind it. And they also had different approaches. The de Vaucouleur's approach was uh, everything in the kitchen sink approach. His idea was that any one of these distance measures we've talked about could have flaws. But if you take 100 different distance measures, then on average, they should be good. Alan Sandage believed that if you have 100 different things, you're just averaging 100 different sources of bias and uncertainty and error, and you're just going to get worse and worse. What you should do is try and pick one or two gold standard methods and really pursue them very carefully. Yeah, and in some sense, it really depends on how well, you know, whether or not you think those hundred ideas of de Vaucouleur would be using, they were really reasonable estimates. I mean, it's sort of, you can ask the question, uh, you know, have you seen the prime minister? No. How, how tall do you think he is? And then average a bunch of that. And are you going to get a good answer? The answer is... Probably not. Because You're going to get a good understanding of how big people think the Prime Minister is, but may have been no resemblance yeah. to the actual height. On the other hand, the other problem you have is there were no gold standards. There was nothing, and so they squeezed blood out of a stone unsuccessfully, I think. So that's where we ended up with these problems. If it hadn't been so interesting, I mean, this is the fate of the universe, if it had yeah. been trying to discover, I don't know, evolutionary pathways of type O stars, people wouldn't have bothered. It would have been yeah. just too difficult. People would have said, look, the, day, the observations are not good enough, the theory is not good enough, let's move on to something that's more possible. The reason that people were drawn like moths to a flame to this was because it is the fate of the universe. Yeah, the fate and the age of the universe. And in this case, I genuinely believe, having met both sides, genuinely believe they thought they had the right answer and the other person was an idiot. And of course, what we're going to find out is uh, neither had the correct answer. Both were wrong. Okay, so let's continue. We're going to talk now about some even more problems that make this even harder than we've already talked about. And then we'll go and talk about the amazing transformation this field has been through in the last 20 or so years, so much so that there's actually a real consensus about what's coming on now and how that happened. It's been an amazing 20 years.